What is going on, everybody? It is your boy. It's Nick Sands Presents, and today is a very, very special day. We are going to the Liberty Hotel in Boston um, to shoot an event. I'm very excited about it. However, driving in Boston and parking in Boston has proven to be a fucking disaster. I actually have no idea how to get there from here. We just had a big snowstorm up in New Hampshire. Looks like it was mostly rain down here. I parked at Mass General. And now I gotta walk to the Liberty Hotel. I think I fucked up the parking, but what you need to do? I did, I'm doing my best here. Pro tip, when it's storming and you don't wanna have wet dress shoes, you wear your winter boots and then you just change when you get there. Look at this little fella. This is the, apparently it's an, it's historic. All right, I'm gonna, See if I can get in here. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. All right, so my plan is basically to wander around until I find it. Scampo, I don't think that's it. It's important to remember that I have absolutely no idea where I'm going, but I think the Liberty Ballroom sounds like a good place for events. I'm gonna start there. back outside because I forgot my tripod in my car like a fool. So I gotta try and find my way back. I hate this city. Okay, so I left my keys in my camera bag. So today's not off to a great start. Let's try that again. All right, so I got my tripod, but even more exciting. I just talked to the valet guy and he's gonna let me walk up this very creepy staircase. Look at this thing, so spooky. It's funny, I saw this on the way down and tried to sneak down, but it said valet only and they stopped me. <laughs> I feel VIP as hell right now. Even though this is, t this is the valet staircase, so I guess it's like the exact opposite of VIP. Third time's the charm, we got the tripod, we're going back in. Very winded from that wagon. Things are picking up big time. 40 people here. I had to lose my jacket because I'm sweating. Every fold of my body is a swamp. Audio is getting more challenging because of the uh, music playing, however, I did want to show you this. Look at that spread. video I said it looked like a jail in here. The reason for that is that apparently it used to be a jail. So that's something. All right, I still haven't told you why I'm here. The reason I'm here is for something called uh, Kids Chance. Kids Chance offers scholarships to families of people who are either severely injured or dying while working. As a father, the idea that someone would be out there looking out for my kids, or something happened to me, um, oh, it's just really huge. As much as we don't want to think about what our kids are just doing without us, yeah. I'm getting teary out just thinking about it, honestly. It's just really great that there's people out there that can help make their life a little less hard to if you're not there. Anyways, that's why I'm here tonight. I'm going to do some interviews with some people and just hanging out and kind of getting the vibe. I would like to introduce you to my new friend, Lori, and she is the president of Kids Chance in Massachusetts. I guess the first question is, is how would you describe um, Kids Chance to someone who asks? So Kids Chance is an organization that pro provides um, scholarships to students whose parents have been catastrophically or fatally injured at work. Anybody who qualifies for this scholarship gets awarded the scholarship. Once a, a student qualifies, they can continue to receive that scholarship for up to four years of undergraduate. So it doesn't necessarily have to be 
um, a university or a college. It can be a, a trade school type of situation too, or any kind of program. How did this get started, and why? It's like it's like so specific. How did it get kind of off the ground? It started with an individual who um, lost his father at a very young age, and he. Um, became very successful and then thought back on it and wanted to provide scholarships to students in that same situation. You know, it's very hard to put a student through school with two parents having an income. And then when you lose one of those, this is just such a life-changing event that that's not like really one of those things you think about, their, their education. We, the, the stories that we hear are just devastating and heart-wrenching. And to know that we can walk in and do a little bit to help a student to get through that that difficult financial time is just it's just heartwarming to feel that. Is there any uh, story in particular that pops into your head that you could you could share that kind of gives an example of what you guys are, are trying to do? One that really sticks in my heart is um, this girl was a senior in college and it was during COVID and her mom worked at a grocery store and. Her mom, it was during um, where you could call in and they would deliver the groceries out to your car. So the mom went out to deliver the groceries to somebody in their car and got killed in the parking lot, got run over and killed in the parking lot. And this girl is a senior in college. And the whole story was just like heart-wrenching. Like this mom is not gonna see her daughter graduate from college. And that just, that, that story sticks with me, but every single story we've heard is like, it's just so sad. You know, you can never make somebody's grief go away or, or make things all better for anybody, but if we can have one little way to help somebody not have to worry so much about college or, or just be there for something, you know, we send them care packages. At Christmas or, or when it's time for finals, we send them gift cards to Dunkin' Donuts, and we just, like, just to help them get through finals or, or whatever. When they graduate, we always give them a graduation gift. It's just, you know, just we want them to know we care. That's it. Everything is run by fundraisers. That's how we get the money to do the scholarships, and it gets hard. And the board has been great, and we and we have an incredible fundraising team. Um, we have a golf tournament every year that that is very um, profitable. And this is our first gala, and we're hoping that we we can make some money on this too. If we didn't have the support of of all the people that donate and and volunteer, we wouldn't be able to do this. Where can people find you and how can they donate to you? Well, we have a website, um, kidschanceofmouse.org, and we have, um, if, you, if you go on our website, you can donate online. It also will tell you all of our um, upcoming events. We love to have people join our events and be part of everything that we do. Thank you so much, Lori, and um, I really... Guys, if you can go donate or um, reach out to Lori and see what you can do, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Appreciate um, your help. All right, let's get back to the party. Okay. <laughs> and now I would like to introduce you to my new friend, Amber. Um, Amber, how are you connected to uh, Kids Chance? I have the privilege of having three kids who are recipients of the Kids Chance Scholarship. So um, my husband, Craig, the father to our three kids, was um, fatally injured in a uh, work-related accident. And so Kids Chance is here to provide scholarship money for kids who are wanting to continue the, their education um, with scholarship money. So when you lose your husband, you lose everything. I mean, and so there are all of these things that you're trying to figure out, you know, how to pay bills and how to take care of a house, how to raise these kids, and then college was just around the corner, and it was a big stressor. How were we going to do this? And it was my workers' comp lawyer who said, hey, there's this great scholarship foundation that your kids meet their um, eligibility requirements. So we reached out. It was an easy process. And um, Kevin has been able to receive a scholarship for three years. Andrew has gotten one for two years. And Gabby's about ready to launch, and she'll get one next year. How difficult was it for you to actually receive the scholarship and like go through the process of applying and getting it? Well, the kids, I do ask the kids, this is their thing. And so they are responsible for filling out the paperwork. So they're in communication with, I believe it's Susan, and they fill out, I think, a form and answer some questions. And then it was so seamless. Like as far, if my kids can manage this process, literally anyone can. And the money is sent directly to the school where they're applying. And it just comes right up on our bill that, that they're 
there's a scholarship that's been provided. So the behind the scenes piece is so seamless and so incredibly easy, which makes life just a little bit easier for us too. Is there any advice you would give to people who may be dealing with something similar to you or, or maybe struggling with losing a loved one or, or a husband? As much as you may want to try to push it to the side or try to get through it, fast. It really needs to be an intentional every day. You face this head on and these are the small things or the big things that I can do on a daily basis to continue working your way through it. Thank you so much and you know I hope that your kids get through college and, and go on to great and big things. Thank you very much. Thank Honor you. I have really been abusing the valet parking staircase. I just wanted to say I really appreciate the hotel for letting me do that because lugging this gear is not easy. All right, moment of truth time. Can I get my parking validated? That's the real question of today because I don't I don't know if I fucked up parking. So we're gonna see what happens. Am I locked out? <laughs> that would be worse. They said they were open till 11. I actually have no idea where I'm supposed to go, and I'm kind of panicking. Okay, this one's open. This one's open. Hey, I just need to validate parking at the National Hotel. No, the valet guy over there said that I could, that yeah, you guys would. Okay, so the valet was wrong. You cannot, you cannot park there. So I just paid $60 for, for parking. This will teach you to pay attention in Boston, guys.